First, I want to thank all of you for your, your patience. I know uh, it's been a challenging scheduling afternoon. I know some of you were in arraignment, so we appreciate you being here um, to hear more about this really uh, very important uh, consequential uh, matter. So uh, I'm Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan District Attorney. Uh, one of the distinct uh, privileges of working here and leading this uh, great office uh, is our significant capability and expertise in white collar matters uh, and the way we bring that expertise to bear uh, to address street crimes. And we're seeing more and more in our practice, uh, time and time again, uh, street crime and uh, white collar crime intertwine, whether that is uh, violent robberies followed uh, by identity theft, uh, illegal gun sales accompanied by uh, financial fraud, uh, or cryptocurrency uh, linked uh, to terrorism. Uh, and so today uh, is uh, one of those type of matters where we have uh, street crimes and white collar fraud uh, intertwined, and it's another demonstration of why we're so vig vigilant uh, in that intersection. Uh, we're charging 18 uh, defendants across four separate indictments, um, two indictments for manufacturing ghost guns, uh, a third in indictment for conspiracy uh, to defraud the pandemic unemployment assistance program, uh, including through stealing the identities of uh, homeless persons, uh, and a fourth uh, a burglary uh, of a residence. Uh, I'll give more detail on each of the four, uh, but before I go any further, I want to I want to thank uh, the public servants who I'm privileged to work with side by side, uh, and those who worked on this matter, and then our great uh, law enforcement collaborators. So our team, uh, some of whom are uh, in the arraignment part, uh, includes uh, Assistant District Attorneys uh, Michael Kelly. We have ADA Stephanie Schaefer here uh, with us, uh, uh, and ADA uh, Valeria Golubchik uh, also in court, um, supported. Uh, as is the case for so many of our matters uh, by a digital evidence analyst, uh, Sophie Heyman, and investigative analyst, Henry Brody, uh, and really showing our kind of interdisciplinary approach here, uh, folks from our high technology analysis unit and from our rackets investigators and investigation bureau. Uh, and particularly on a matter like this, uh, we are collaborating with others in law enforcement uh, and uh, cannot bring this type of matter without phenomenal uh, law enforcement partners. And so uh, we have with us from the New York State Department of Labor, uh, Chief Investigative Officer Robert Barnett uh, and Senior Investigative Officer Kerry uh, Sunkanden. Pardon me. Uh, we really thank you for your, your partnership. Uh, we have from the Department of Labor, Office of Inspector General, uh, the Assistant Special Agent in Charge of the Northeast Region, uh, James Woods, uh, and from the United States uh, Postal Service Inspector General, Northeast Area Field Office, uh, Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Stephen Vargas. Uh, and so I want to thank them uh, and their agencies for the great collaboration. I also want to thank our city DOI uh, and DHS who couldn't be here but were uh, helpful in this investigation as well. So let me start with the two uh, ghost gun uh, alleged conspiracies. Uh, the first alleged conspiracy occurred from May 2022 through January 2023 uh, with a, a DHS employee uh, working along with another. Um, they allegedly purchased uh, hundreds of dollars worth of 3D printing machines, 3D printing materials, uh, and ghost gun parts, uh, many of them uh, through uh, eBay and Amazon, uh, and doing so to build their own homemade weapons. Uh, they would text each other links of where to purchase the parts and then swap pictures and videos of the finished products. Uh, the second alleged ghost gun occur uh, conspiracy occurred from May 2022 uh, through January 2023. Um, Similar swapping of, of information, again, to the end of printing and manufacturing uh, ghost runs. Both of the conspiracies really underscore um, how the public can get their hand on these really dangerous uh, goods. Uh, really creating firearms from the comfort of one's own home, 
uh, with just a few clicks on popular websites like eBay or Amazon, uh, the public can buy printing machines uh, and gun parts for just a few hundred dollars. Uh, so those are the first uh, two uh, indictments, uh, the ghost gun alleged conspiracies. The third uh, pertains to pandemic uh, benefits fraud. Uh, and it grows directly out of, grew directly out of uh, the ghost gun uh, uh, matters. Um, using uh, law enforcement techniques in those matters led us to um, a completely different form of illegal activity. And that's a conspiracy to defraud uh, the program, a critical program at a critical time um, in our country's history. Uh, two defendants coming together, allegedly working with 15 others to successfully submit 170 fraudulent applications um, to this pandemic program. Uh, to the New York State Department of Labor. Uh, five of the defendants charged were DHS employees. So we allege that the DHS employees use their authority, use their positions, uh, working with our city homeless shelter agency to steal personal identifying information of shelter residents. Uh, this is that information they had access to by virtue of and under the authority of their position. So abusing their positions, we allege, to get this information. Um, and as a result, many of the fraudulent applications that are charged within um, um, this indictment were applied for and on behalf of unsuspecting unhoused individuals. Once the defendants had the personal identifying information, they would fill out fraudulent applications for pandemic unemployment assistance to the New York State Department of Labor. Once the claims were accepted, DOL would provide a bank check, uh, and that, that bank check, bank card, excuse me, to the addresses provided on the applications. Oftentimes, the defendants would just use their own addresses and have the applications uh, sent there. But eventually, they enlisted yet another public servant. Um, this is a case that involves public servants uh, on the local, state, and federal level. And so they eventually enlisted the help of another co-conspirator, a USPS letter carrier. Uh, and they would send the checks to addresses specifically on this defendant's mail route. Uh, the worker would then intercept that mail and then provide them to the defendants. Uh, many of the other defendants in this scheme worked for government agencies, including NYCHA, uh, the NYPD, USPS, and the MTA. In total, uh, the defendants were able to submit 170 fraudulent applications to DOL, netting approximately $1.2 million. Stealing the identity of New Yorkers, many of them homeless, and defrauding a critical social safety net program during one of the most challenging times in our, histories, in our city's history uh, is downright uh, shameful, and we allege criminal. Uh, what's more, and I say this as someone who's been a public servant uh, and continues to be one and cherishes and trusts that, that public trust put in us, many of the defendants worked in government positions of trust. Uh, this type of co conduct by our public servants uh, is unacceptable and, as we allege, uh, criminal. That leads us to the fourth indictment, a burglary charge. Uh, perhaps uh, not surprising, uh, when one is uh, uh, dealing in uh, the proceeds of fraud, uh, a uh, disagreement arose as to how to divide those proceeds, uh, which leads us to this fourth indictment. Um, one of uh, the partners, the alleged partners in the pandemic benefits fraud scheme, along with a fellow DHS employee, believed that another defendant was keeping more than his uh, fair share, which I will put in quotes, of the proceeds from the fraud. Uh, so she enlisted her boyfriend and a friend who also were involved in the underlying uh, um, application fraud to burglarize uh, the residential apartment of one of their alleged co-conspirators in November 2020. Uh, this person began working later in time for the NYPD in the summer of 2022. Uh, she was ultimately fired by the NYPD when the NYPD learned about the burglary. Um, and that is the overview of our four indictments. So I will just sort of, I know that's a, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, moving parts, and I will just sort of summarize. Um, you know, we start with uh, a ghost gun investigation. 
um, which is something that we've been focusing on more and more with NYPD uh, and our federal ATF, uh, and very, very serious allegations about literally printing out firearms from one's home, uh, and that street crime investigation um, grew into and developed into a very, very uh, important financial fraud investigation where we see uh, individuals um, defrauding a, a very important public program at a very important time uh, in our country's history, uh, and then uh, a burglary arising from that. So it really captures what I said up front, what we're seeing about sort of the integrated and interlocking uh, white collar and violent crimes. Uh, and then here we have much of the conduct we allege being committed by those uh, who are in public service who we should and must hold uh, to the highest uh, standards. So in the DA's office here in Manhattan, we are connecting the dots literally every day, uh, using every tool at our disposal to keep Manhattanites and those who visit uh, and work in Manhattan uh, safe, uh, no matter what the harm. Uh, and so I again want to thank uh, the outstanding team, which is working in court, many of them as we speak, uh, and our great, great partners for what is, uh, while some of these tools may be new, this is old-fashioned, great uh, investigative work, which our partners have been doing. Uh, I don't want to date folks, but for, for a long time and doing it very, very capably. So honored to, to, to work with them, and as I said, really honored to work side-by-side side with, the, with the great ADAs and professional staff here. 